when all things seem to fall apart, God is there holding you up. Nashville's contemporary Christian and country songwriter, music artist, and performer, Gary Chapman, has received countless awards, number one singles, Dove Awards, Grammy nominations, and several times named Male Vocalist of the Year. His passion for reaching the world with his songs of hope, faith, and laughter has reached millions, but his life hasn't always been a smooth ride. This is his story. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Gary Chapman, it has been a long time. I've been wanting you on my show forever. We have talked about this I for know, a long time. At maybe. least a couple of years. And then COVID hit. And, yeah. And, but, oh, yeah, you know, I heard about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but thank you for inviting me to sit down. You have been so busy over decades. <laughs> Let's go back. Wow. It's when a long did it way. all start? It's a long way back. I came to Nashville when I was 19. That's 45 years ago. Um, and it's just been a bizarre, fabulous, wild ride. And it does not slow down. I know. You've it been just so busy. Doesn't. Well, you know, I think a lot of that uh, is, is choice. I think we all get to make that choice every morning. You know, am I going to fire into this day or am I going to sit on my tail and let it come at me, wash over me, you know, and I'm not very good at that, so. Well, you were born in Oklahoma, correct? Yes. Okay. Warica, Oklahoma, uh, which is 12 miles from the Texas border. I tell, I tell people that I was clinging to the uterine wall, you can make it, mama, you can make it, <laughs> and she did not. We did not get to Texas. No, I grew up in Texas uh, most of my, well, all my life, starting when I was about six, I guess, but born in Oklahoma, love it there. And your dad was a... Pastor? Assembly of God pastor his entire life. How was yes. that like growing up as a... You know what? Uh, it's uh, historically horrible. Uh, preacher's kids rightfully get a, a reputation for being, you know, pretty rowdy as a rule because they all live in varying degrees of some kind of repression. My parents were amazing about that particular thing. Um, our house was safe. You know, it's not like they didn't have rules, trust me. They had them and they enforced them. But um, it was somewhere that I could feel absolutely safe. Because when you pastor a, a, in a small town, like it's 2,000 people, De Leon, Texas, and he was much beloved. So despite the fact that there were tons of churches uh, and everybody went to one, you know, uh, he didn't pastor them all on Sunday morning. But when, when the wheels came off, he was just a great pastor, and people knew he was somebody that could help them. So uh, he kind of pastored the town to some degree. That means uh, that, you know, there's nowhere to go without being caught. <laughs> well, I love your history and your story, and we'll get to it, but it almost comes full circle with your dad at the yeah. end. I read that, and, yeah. and, you know, what you and your wife did, and and took care of him. And, but before we get into that, I want to talk to you about how you, you're one of the most sought after conte contemporary Christian and country mm -hmm. uh, music artists here. And, and how did that all start? When, when did God start pulling you into music and songwriting? Right. Uh, my mom stood me up on a piano bench when I was three. And the two of us sang an old song called Inside the Gate. And um, an old fellow in the church came up to me after the service. And he said, son, you did a good job. And he stuck a, a brand new buffalo nickel in my hand. How old were you? I was three. Three. And I never looked back. That just seemed ridiculous to me that I could get up and do something I love to do. And somebody pay me for it? Are you kidding? So I always knew that I was going to do music somehow. And uh, that's why I came to Nashville. I started out uh, playing. I was one of my very first jobs was uh, with the the singing Rambo's. I'm sure you remember Dottie Rambo and all that. Dottie How old really, were you then? I was. I would have been probably 18, 18, sneaking up on 19 by then, and it was just awesome. 
It was a great job. They were paying me 175 bucks a show. And we were working three or four nights a week. And I'm sharing a one bedroom apartment with three other guys, right? And nobody's ever home, uh, all musicians. And I thought I was on top of the absolute world. And on top of that, Dottie, she saw something and she took me under her wing and she taught me how to write songs. Until, until Dottie came along, I was just the kid in class that could finish the dirty rhyme quickest. Well, I'm telling you, you have become a famous songwriter. So tell me some of the songs that you've written and who inspired them? Well, uh, it's not a stock answer, it's actually the truth. Uh, God inspires them all. Creativity is his. The enemy can't actually create anything. He mimics things. But God makes things out of nothing. And when he lets you pr participate in that, it is as godly as I ever get. It's just such a, an honor to, to be a part of that process. Now, obviously, you have to work at it a bit. Uh, when I first came to town, I really... I really worked hard at being a songwriter. I, every day I'd, I'd have two or three writing sessions and just work hard because it is there is a craft to it. And then over the years I realized that the songs I worked the hardest on, they didn't have an ounce of fat on them. They might get cut, but they would never be a single. It would never be something that, that impacted people. And then every now and then it's like you step off a curb and this song-shaped bus just mows you down. You did not see it coming. And it's literally as quickly as I can ride it down. That's how I, that's when I know that I'm just here for the ride, you know? And, and it's awesome. It's, it's humbling and it's awesome. Those are the songs that have the longest life. When was that moment that you knew? And what's, do you remember one of the songs I that do. you just knew? Absolutely. Uh, I would take songs to Dottie. We'd be going down the road, you know, going to the next show uh, with regularity, and I'd play it, and she'd say, well, honey, that's nice, but in the second verse, it's just sort of critique it, you know. And I went up there one day, and I played this song top to bottom, and for the first time, she didn't have anything to say. She just said, son, that's a great song. Why don't you sing that tonight in the, in the concert? And I was like, okay. I did not expect her to follow through. She did. There was a, 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 an amazing response, popcorn, you know, I call them popcorn uh, standing ovations. They're different kinds. There's one that's just, poof, they just pop. And it was that. She never asked me to sing again. That's actually why I decided to quit and just become a songwriter full time. That song was, was Father's Eyes. Father's Eyes. Yeah. A lot of people know that. You know, we're going to talk about your journey and the struggles that you faced. You've had a a few struggles in your life. Thank God. And we're going to be talking about it in a minute.